1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's go ahead and start reading in verse 1. It says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. Don't make God look bad by being a sorry employee. Just, you know, watch your behavior. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Note that verse right there. Uh, those who think that gain is godliness. Withdraw from those people, the Bible says. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. We've all heard, you can't take it with you, right? Remember Job? Naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall return hither, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay, This fits great with that, those passages. But verse 8 says, And having food and raiment, let us be there with content, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So right there in that passage, we see him telling us all these things we need to watch for as a Christian. And he tells him to watch out for those who think that gain is godliness. You Stay away from those people. He mentions the famous verse, the love of money is the root of all evil. Those who covet after that, they end up getting themselves in trouble. Things start happening in their lives that they didn't intend because they just love that money so much. They love things so much. And we all know that verse about the love of money being the root of all evil. We all know that you can't take it with you. But yet, why is it that people are constantly controlled by money? You know, they are ruled by money. Their uh, emotional state depends on their financial situation many times. Why is that? Well, there's a good reason for that. Turn over to Matthew chapter 13. Jesus makes a statement in here. And this is where we're going to get the title of the message. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 20 says, But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it, yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended, he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful right there. Jesus note, he makes the statement, the deceitfulness of riches. And that's where we get the title of the message this morning, the deceitfulness of riches. What is it that makes riches so deceitful with people? And because and, in, in America, people are literally controlled by money. And I, one of the reasons I'm thinking about this right now, you know, the Lord's had this message on my heart. We're, we're right into the beginning of the summer season. OK, and listen, we have a problem with this all year round. But in the summer season, we see kind of another example of it. Everybody gets out of their normal routines. The kids are done with school. You're kind of in a summer routine. And what is it that we're supposed to be doing in the summertime? All right, we're supposed to go on vacation, right? That's vacation season. And we all see the billboards. We all, y'all watch the commercials. You see the advertisements. And we are constantly being bombarded by advertisements today. I'm not preaching about TV this morning, but listen, if you sit around watching a lot of TV, you are constantly being hammered with advertisements. I mean, constantly. I, I can't stand it. I just, man, you know, and unfortunately, many people, you slowly get conditioned to these things. But when you don't have t television, regular television, and you find yourself in places occasionally where you see a lot of it, okay, you're, you've not had time to grow accustomed to how they're doing things. And I'm going to tell you right now, you want to watch Brother Tommy get in a bad mood. You want to watch me just start being ignorant. Just get around me when I'm sitting there and I'm, I start watching commercials. I just get aggravated to no end at just how foolish do these people think I am. 
I mean, the way they, the way they portray these things, and, I, and I've got to be careful. I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to get into the specifics of what really bothers me about these commercials because it could come off wrong and I don't want to, it's a separate subject. But I'm telling you, you people think I'm falling for this. I mean, what, it, commercials show me what they really think about Americans. And you know what it tells me? It tells me they think we're stupid. And you know what? For the most part, they're right. Because people are falling for this stuff. And you know what? In the summertime, you know, most of you, you know, if you're like me, you can't afford to do all those things you see on the commercials, can you? You can't afford to drive all those nice cars like they show on there and take the big fancy vacations. And you see these things all the time. And we're constantly being told, you deserve these things. You should have these things. You've earned these things. Go do these things. And a lot of times we're like, we can't do it. And we've got food. We've got raiment. But we're not content. We're not happy with that. And people get depressed. They get miserable. And this and summer is another time of year when a lot of times people end up getting depressed. You know, along with the Christmas season too. Why do you think it is that people get so depressed during the Christmas season? Because you're really hammered with advertisements during that time. You know, you're supposed to buy your kids all these things. And if you've got teenagers, they all deserve iPhones and iPads and, you know, computers and all these presents that cost hundreds of dollars. That I got six kids. I can't afford that stuff. And man, you know, you feel like a loser. You know, oh man, what, what's wrong? And then your kids feel like victims. And in America, everybody loves being a victim. And we see in the Bible that, you know, we, with food and raiment, we're supposed to be content. But we're not. People are not content with that. And they are, many times people are miserable. They should be happy. They're healthy. They have their health. You know, they have a place to live. They are not, their lives are not being threatened. They are not on the run. They are not starving. And yet depression is huge in America today. Why is that? I believe it's because we are being deceived by the riches of this world. The deceitfulness of riches are getting into the minds of Americans because we watch so much of this stuff. And listen, when it comes to, you know, when it comes, when it comes to money, you know, th think about how much of the world is starving, you know, and, and really impoverished. But, you know, you got Americans today and even Christians, they will sell out. They will get out of the will of God for just a few extra bucks for a few dollars an hour more. Listen, I mean, what are you really going to be able to accumulate with that in America today? I mean, do you realize how fast money goes I mean, it's crazy how fast it goes. And, you know, some things that everybody wants that's not wrong. You know, when it comes to riches, most people, you know, if you're depressed because you haven't got the money to do all the things that you want to do, you're not going to say, I'm depressed because I'm not rich. You know, I just want, I just want the basic necessities of life. I, you know, I want financial security. You know, I just want to have enough to eat. I want clothing. You know, I want a secure future. You know, I wouldn't mind a few nice things. You know, I'd like to have the vacations, the nice homes, the cars, all those things. You know, I want to feel protected. I want to feel safe. And to sum it all up today, people, they just don't want to worry. Isn't that what it's all about? You know, why couldn't I just get a million dollars? That way I just don't have to worry about anything anymore. Because, you know, we don't want to have to pray every day to Jesus. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, it's we pray, you know, Lord, give me today a bread for a lifetime. I mean, that's kind of how we are. And the truth is, I mean, you know, unless you are starving to death today, you should be content. And a lot of people aren't. Well, you know, yeah, I'm fine today. I've got food today. I'm wearing clothes today, but I don't know if I will be tomorrow. You know, well, don't worry about tomorrow. Take no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself. You know what? Just if God gave you what you need today, then He'll probably take care of you tomorrow too. I mean, just stop and think of it. Just think about your age sometime. I'm 36 years old. I haven't starved to death yet. I haven't died of anything yet. The Lord's taken care of me up to this point. Uh, he's got a perfect track record for 36 years and I'm going to sit around and I'm going to get down. I'm going to get depressed worrying about tomorrow. Why would we do that? Why would a person who's in their 80s or their 90s, you know, get all worried when God's kept them, he's protected them up to that point? You know why? It's because of the deceitfulness of riches. We are being programmed. I'm we're being fed lies and it's getting into our minds and it is messing up the thinking of God's people. But listen, just a few things, you know, before I get to the main part of the message, what I want, I want to show you about riches is first of all, we see there in first Timothy six ten, uh, it says, you know, the famous verse, um, lost my spot for the love of money is the root of all evil. 
which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Y'all see that? It says here in the Bible, those who are seeking after riches, not the necessities, okay? It's fine for you to seek after necessities. As a, you know, as a father, I'm supposed to provide for my family. That is my job. God expects me to do that. But yet, at the same time, if I start, if I get greedy and I start pursuing riches, the Bible says what happens is they pierce themselves through with many sorrows. It ends up bringing things that were not intended. In fact, go to Proverbs chapter 23, and we'll start uh, reading in verse 29. I want to show you something here. But it says, those who covet after riches, they pierce themselves through with many sorrows. And it says in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 29, who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions, who hath babbling, who hath wounds without cause, who hath redness of eyes, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. And it goes on about the effects of alcohol. And we see that who has sorrows, it's they that tarry along at the wine. Well, you know, many people who seek after riches, I mean, these are many times very stressed out people. People who, I mean, they are burdened with so many things because, you know, a lot of times, you know, one person can only produce so much, okay? I, you know, one person can only do so much work. And, but when you start becoming a millionaire, a billionaire, whatever, you know, you're relying on the work of other people too. It's not just about what you do anymore. And if you fail, many times you end up taking down a lot of other people too. And so it creates a great burden on people. And many of these people, they're alcoholics. Many of these people are drug addicts. That pursuit of riches brought them sorrow. And here's the thing, when you're poor, okay, now poor people, we get stressed out too, don't we? But you know what? People like me, I can't afford to go out and get drunk. I, alcohol is expensive. I can't afford to go out and buy drugs. Okay? Listen, I'm not getting welfare and stuff, so I can't go and spend all the money I'm getting from the government on drugs and things like a lot of people do. I work too hard for my money. I can't do that. And yet, we all know that people, many times when they're, when they're down, when they're depressed, what do they do? They go to the drugs. They go to the alcohol. They go to these sinful things. But when you're poor and you don't have the money to do that, you know what you end up being forced to do? Fix your problems. You have to actually deal with your problems. Because think about it. When you are struggling, when you're going through a difficult time, let's say you're struggling financially. And you go and you get drunk. What did you just accomplish? Your pain went away for a little bit, but you just spent more money and now your financial troubles are even worse. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense. And people today, they're pursuing riches, you know, so they can have all these things that many times end up becoming a burden. You know, I've seen people that drive these fancy cars and things. And listen, if you can afford a fancy car, I mean, go for it. Enjoy it. But me, I'd be too worried about it. I wouldn't want, you know, I'd be one of those people that, you know, parks at the far back of the parking lot, you know, so nobody's going to hit it with their door. You know, I, I wouldn't want my kids riding in it, you know, and have you ever been in one of these houses before that are more like museums and there, there was always this, you know, old grumpy grandma on there. It's always screaming at her grandkids and stuff. I knew a lady like that one time. She had this big, huge house and we went to, we went to go inside of it and it was stressful because she was just spazzing out. She had all these fancy things and her grandkids are in there and her grandkids were pretty wild and she's just yelling at them and you know, the grandkids weren't usually allowed to go into the house because it was, it was a museum. I'm like, you know what? What's the point of having all that stuff if you can't even enjoy people? You know, but the thing is, you can be poor and enjoy people, but you know, you can't be rich and have all those things apparently and enjoy people. She sure couldn't. And I'm telling you, many people, they don't intend for these things to happen. They pursue riches thinking this will give me peace. 
This will give me joy. I will have more fun. But the Bible teaches that these people who are pursuing after riches end up finding the opposite. They find sorrows. They find, you know, they find troubles, things that they didn't intend. We see that person who tarries long at the wine. They behold strange women. Their heart utters perverse things. When people are under the influence of alcohol, they do things that they would not normally do in their right mind, which many times brings other sorrows along with it. And then sometimes it's like when you find out what's happening to these people, you know, when drunk, when under the influence of alcohol, whatever it is, I'm like, you know, I'm thankful I'm poor. I'm thankful I can't afford those things. When you see the way, the end of some of these people's lives, when they're dying of cirrhosis of the liver or whatever disease they got or sickness they got from taking these drugs or whatever, I'm like, man, I'm glad I can't afford those things. I, you know, think of all the health problems that you don't have when you can't afford alcohol, when you can't afford cigarettes, when you can't afford drugs. You know, there's a lot of health problems that you're going to avoid because, because of that. But many people think, no, I need more money so I can buy all these things. And then all those things bring sorrows. That was not their intention. Nobody pursues riches so they can have sorrow, so they can have drugs, so they can have family problems. But why does it happen? It happens because riches are deceitful. The deceitfulness of riches. And it said, and so, you know, we're very prone to deception because of the hours and hours we sit watching advertisements. You might think I don't fall for this stuff, but listen, you have no idea probably how programmed you really are if you spend a lot of time in front of the television or in front of the computer. The Bible says in Lamentation chapter three, uh, Lamentation chapter three, verse fifty one, it says, Mine eye affecteth my heart. You probably heard that verse before, mine eye affected my heart. What we see affects our heart. What we see, what we look at, what we watch, it affects our heart. It affects how we feel. It affects how we think. These things are very powerful. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 8, it's talking about Lot. And it says that, for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. He had a righteous man dwelling in Sodom and Gomorrah, but he was constantly seeing and hearing the things they were doing. And the Bible said it vexed his righteous soul. What are the two senses that we use when watching television? It's seeing and hearing, isn't it? You know, we're not touching these things. We're not feeling these things. We're not smelling these things, but we are seeing and we are hearing and it's affecting us. And you might not think it's affecting you, but I'm telling you, these things are affecting people. They are bringing people down. Listen, if you are full today, or not, not even just full, if you're not starving to death today, if you're wearing clothes today, you should be content. If you're living a godly life, you should be content. You should be happy. And many people today are not happy and they can't figure out why they're not happy. They're going and they're paying all this money to see a psychologist or something so they can figure out what's wrong with them. And, you know, and they'll pull up some bad thing from their past and, yeah, it's your parents' fault. You know, your, you know, your dad spanked you. You know, your mom yelled at you too much. And so yeah, it, that, it's their fault that you're miserable. No, maybe it's they have fallen for the foolishness of this world. They've watched the advertisements. You know, I think where a lot of this blame your parents stuff comes from is all these people watching these talk shows that they watch. Or these people, you know, and they, they listen to these Dr. Phil's. Listen, that, I'm sorry, folks. If you like watching Dr. Phil, I hope this doesn't make you mad, but I think that guy's a moron, all right? I think what he says is ridiculous. He just, he doesn't make sense. You know, he sounds good. He sounds friendly. I, I can't do his accent. He's got that friendly accent, you know, and just, you know, oh, man, we care about you. We, you know, we're going to try to help you here. I, I, was that any good at all? I thought I, I was, that was terrible. I won't do that one again. But listen, people watch that stuff and it's affecting them. And I hear people sometimes repeat foolishness that they hear from shows like that. You know, you'll talk to people and, you know, and their lives are miserable. And, you know, and, uh, you know, what am I supposed to do? My life's a wreck. And, you know, people say, oh, just follow your heart. And even Christians will say things like that when the Bible says the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Where do you get, where do they get that stuff from? They're getting it from TV. They're watching these things. They're hearing these things and it is affecting people. They don't think they are. Listen, you might not think there's anything wrong with you because you're just like the rest of the people out there. But I don't know if you've noticed, all right, clean your act up for a little while and you'll start to figure out the rest of the people aren't doing too good. Listen, normal might be depressed. Normal might be miserable, but I don't believe that God wants us to be that way. 
And we are being constantly deceived by the things that we see, the things we hear. Listen, everywhere we go, we're seeing and hearing things. You know, when we're in a car, we're listening to the radio. And what are they doing? Half of the radio is commercials, commercials, advertisements, buy this, you deserve this. You know, this, and, and we, we need to start, you know, seeing this stuff for what it really is, ignoring it. You know, the Bible says that those who teach that uh, gain is godliness, you know, withdraw from them. Now, the media and commercials, they don't teach you that you're godly if you have all these things, okay? They don't talk about godness, but what do they do? They teach that you're happy. You'll be happy if you do these things. You'll be happy if you go on these vacations. And listen, TV commercials, they're completely fake. They're, they're so fake, it angers me. It, it, may, it makes me so mad. And listen, companies, they spend millions on product placement in movies, so they, they can deceive your children. Oh, you're getting all conspiracy. Listen, it's just a fact, okay? Everybody knows this. You know, and your kids do. Your kids are sitting there and they're watching this, you know, stupid teen flick on Disney Channel, whatever. And look, don't get me going on Disney Channel. Why'd you bring that up? Listen, man, I, I hate Disney Channel so much. Those teen shows are so stupid. I'm telling you, we were in the doctor's office the other day and they had the Disney Channel on in there. It was one of these teen shows. I don't know what it was exactly, but my kids are all sitting there and just, uh, you know, they're watching it and I just saw the brains getting sucked out of them. And I'm telling you for that time we were in there, they got a little dumber after sitting in there and it's like, man, I, I got to fix this. This is bad. I mean, it was that stupid and you know, they, it's, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm slightly exaggerating, but they, I'm telling you, I do. I think they got a little dumber after watching that. And what do you see on these shows? All right. Listen, parents, if you're going to let your kids watch these things, maybe you ought to watch it with them and pay attention to some of these things. You know, I'll, I'll watch these things. And all these little kids, they've all got smartphones. You know, they've all got the iPads. They've got their own computers in their rooms, televisions in their rooms. Kids should not have those things. All right? I'm sorry. They should not have those things. But why are they doing it? And they're doing that. So your kid will watch that and think, all the kids have cell smartphones. All the kids have computers in their room. All the kids have internet access. All the kids, you know, chat with strangers. All the kids do these things. And parents today, they think it's normal. This is what kids do. No, it's not. That I mean, it, Maybe it is normal to the world, but it's dead wrong. And it's going to get your kids in trouble. And it's going to make them miserable. Why is it that so many kids today, young kids are struggling with depression? Why is it that so many of them are struggling with suicidal thoughts? Where does that come from? Listen, I mean, I was... You know, I was a squirrely little kid. You know, I, I, was, I was kind of a nerd. But you know what? I wasn't allowed to watch all that stuff. But was, I, never, I never even thought one time about committing suicide. Oh, that just that never even crossed my mind. You know, where does that come from? You know, and I, I, I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get nasty or anything. But, you know, just the, the homosexual agenda that's on. T I never thought about that stuff. Never had any inclination towards that stuff. Why are kids gravitating to that so much? Because they're watching it on television right. all the time. And it is, it's affecting them. It's vexing them. It's making them think in a wrong, in a twisted, perverted way. And l listen, when, when you sit and you're watching these things over and over again, seeing them all the time, it's going to affect you. You know, why is it that you think you need that outfit so bad, ladies? You know, Why? I mean, are, you're wearing, everybody in here is wearing clothes right now. Why do you think you need that so bad? You know why? Because you're, you got programmed. You watched that commercial. You saw that commercial. You think you're going to look like the lady that was wearing it in that commercial too. And listen, when people are in commercials, you know, they're, they're always walking. They're always smiling and just happy and everything's great. Their hair is perfect. Their looks are perfect. And you're thinking if I could just wear that outfit, I would be as happy as they look. Folks, that's a commercial. That's a lie. They did 20 takes. The director was cussing them out. She was cussing them back too. I mean, it was nasty. It was ugly. She had to go and get drunk after that commercial or shoot up with something. It's fake. All right? It's a lie. But yet, you'll have women get mad at their husband. Why won't you buy me that outfit? Well, it's just a shirt and it's $100. But I want that shirt. It's $100. All right? You know, you... I can go to Walmart. I can buy a whole bunch of shirts for $100, all right? You know, that you, don't, you don't need that, but people think they do. Why? You're getting programmed by these things. You know, why is it that you think you need that specific house or that vehicle? I mean, why is it that we care so much about what other people think? 
when it comes to when it comes to those things. I mean, listen, if you go and go ahead, watch the car commercials. Go ahead and watch those. And notice too, all right, if you're going to watch these things, notice if it's a commercial geared towards guys. It's always some guy talking like this and talking the power of that truck. And it's got four wheel drive and, you know, it can do this and it'll get you out of any situation. And then if it's a lady, commercial geared towards ladies, this car is safe. You know, look at the safety features. It'll stop by itself and it'll do this. And, you know, oh man, we've got to have that. I, I want my kids to be safe. I want to be a responsible parent. I don't want to be endangering the life of my kid. I've got to do everything I can to protect them. So let's go ahead and spend an extra $20,000 on a vehicle you know, that we can't afford. Let's go make monthly payments on this. And you see the people all driving down the road smiling. You know what? When you go out driving today, look and see how many people are driving in these nice cars with great big smiles on their face. All right? They're not doing it. They do it on the commercials. You know why? Because the people in the commercials are getting paid to smile like that, where the people in real life who fell for those things, they're miserable because they got to make the monthly payment every month. They're trying to figure out how I'm going to keep making these payments without getting my car repoed. That's reality, folks. But yet people still, they fall for it because we're seeing these things and we are being deceived. And you think it doesn't affect you. But listen, it does. Why, why is it that we care? Oh, you know, Well, this car runs great, but it looks terrible. Well, guess what? When you're driving it, you're on the inside of it. You're not looking at it. <laughs> but everybody else is. Well, everybody else isn't making my car payment. I'm making my car payment. Okay? You need to think about these things. You will never see a commercial that says that. Because they want your money. They're trying to deceive you. And it's, it's foolishness. And listen, if you can afford it, go for it. But if you can't, don't, don't do it. Don't get yourself in financial trouble going after these things. It's not going to make you happy. It's going to make you miserable. You're going to go and be paying on that for six or seven years. And it's not going to look like that in six or seven years. It's not going to run that good in six or seven years. And I promise you won't be smiling like they do on the commercials in six or seven years. And so don't, don't fall for these things. And we, you know, there, you know, the vacations, you know, why is vacation so important to you? Well, you know, my, my life's just so stressful. I'm so miserable. You know, I got so many financial problems. So you're going to go now and you're going to spend thousands of dollars, you know, on some trip. And listen, if you can do it, great. Go ahead and do it. But once again, those people you see in the commercials, they are, they're always running around. They're so happy. Everything's great. Everything's wonderful. But in real life, you know, when they're laying out on the beach, they're thinking, how am I going to pay for this thing? My credit card is maxed out. Are we going to be able to make it home? That's what people are really thinking. But you, you fall for these things. If, if I could just go there, I will feel what those people are feeling. Those people are acting. Those people are not real. That is, that is absolutely fake. But we think we have to do these things. It's summer. That's what you're supposed to do in the summertime. And one of the things, too, that's really getting people today when it comes to this stuff too. It's not just commercials, but you all are constantly being programmed and you know advertised to by people through social media. I mean, that's a lot of what it is. You know, people are constantly taking pictures of themselves doing things. Oh man, you look at my, my cousin, they got to go, you know, see the Eiffel Tower, you know, you know, my my other cousin, they went and saw this, this, all that. You know, I got to look at my backyard. And here's the thing, too, when it comes to vacations, we knew somebody uh, from here in town that, I mean, they were always out of money. They were always getting in financial trouble, always needing help. And somehow they got their hands on some money and they went to Disney World and they didn't pay any of their bills. They went to Disney World and they spent thousands of dollars and they came back and my wife is asking her how the trip went. They were miserable. It was terrible. You know, the, it, they didn't have any fun. It was just, they were talking about how miserable it was. But, so why did they even do it? Because they saw the commercials on Disney World. You know, they never show you the long lines on those commercials, do they? They never show you the ticket prices on those commercials. There are never any prices on those things. Just all the little girls, you know, going and hugging the princess. And, you know, and your little girl sees that. And, Daddy, can I go see Cinderella? And, oh, man, you know, what, what are you supposed to say? I can't, it costs $50,000, you know, and they don't have any concept of how much that stuff costs. 
And you do, and then you, you feel crummy and, oh, I'm depressed. Why can't I afford to do these things? You know, all my friends, they're all posting all these things that they do. Why can I do that? They're all smiling. They look so happy in the picture. But listen, folks, don't lie. How many of you have ever, right before you got that picture where you're all smiling, like, y'all better smile or you're getting spanked? All right. We've all done that before. Well, we've got the picture where we all look happy. But there was a bunch of fighting that was going on right before that picture was taken. And that's how it is in a lot of these vacation pictures and things. Y'all spent thousands of dollars so you could go drive somewhere and you could fight the whole time. Just so you could take pictures where you look like you're having fun and you're not having fun so you can impress everybody else. And you know what? The advertisers love it. I mean, you're giving them free advertisement, posting all those things, you know, and hashtagging all those things because other people are going to see that and they're going to think, I need to do that too because that will make me happy. That will give me fulfillment in my life. But listen, folks, these things, they're a lie. They are deceitful. You know, people, they they take pictures of things they bought, okay? Nobody's going to go out and buy a rust bucket and post that on Twitter, Nobody's going to be impressed. No, no, nobody's going to care. You know, they do. They show the amazing places they visit. You know, the fancy restaurants they're eating at. You know, the pictures of themselves smiling. You say, and why do they do this? To impress people. And you know what? I've just decided I can't afford to impress everyone. I can't do it. All right? I'm, I'm the one that has to pay the bills. And so you know what? If you don't like the fact that I wear a lot of the same suits over and over again or the same ties... You know what? You're just going to have to get over it because these ones work. They cover my body. They look decent. And I'm just going to keep on wearing them until they wear out. Well, I'd like to see more of a variety. Then you go buy me the suit. I ain't paying that. They're expensive. I'm not, I'm not, I can't afford to impress all you people with how I dress. I can't afford to impress everybody with the cars I drive. And be honest, do you even really care that much? I mean, do you really care? Has you, have you ever gone home from a service and your subject at the dinner table was, well, wasn't Pastor Tommy's suit nice? <laughs> you don't care, do you? So why would I spend a bunch of money trying to impress you? You don't care. Okay? Nobody, I, I know, ladies, you think everybody's talking about your outfit that, you, that you're wearing, but they're probably not. All right, and, and, and if they are, it's probably bad. Okay, we we notice those things more than anything else. So you know, don't worry about that stuff. Just, but the thing is, we do that because we know the appearance of riches gives the appearance of happiness, and we're trying. And we we don't realize riches are deceptive. Yet we use the appearance of riches to deceive people all the time, don't we? And it is, it's, it's deception. We're trying to deceive because riches are deceptive. The truth is that everyone, you know, everyone, everybody's wants, everybody's needs, everybody can find fulfillment. The Bible says by godliness with contentment. That's what the Bible teaches. And just real quick, a few things. If you practice godliness, you're not focused on the things of the world. First John 2 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Some of y'all are miserable because you're caught up in things of the world. Some of you are actually happy and content because you realize it's all going to burn one of these days. That car that I thought would bring me happiness is going to get smashed in a junkyard one of these days. And you're able to just go on and be, you can be happy if you love the Lord instead of the things of the world. If you have contentment, you're not interested in keeping up with the Smiths and the Joneses. You could care less about that. It's re- it removes a great deal of pressure from your life. And that's, that's where I'm at. You know what? I don't have to impress anybody. That saves me a lot of money. And I'm all for saving money. Stop trying to impress people. Trying to make, you know, try, stop trying to make yourself look like this great success. Nobody cares. And even if you convince somebody that you are the richest person in this church, that's just probably going to make everybody hate you. We all hate people who have more than we do. So forget it. All right. Just don't, don't even try. Just for, forget about that. It's not going to make anybody like you anymore. If you practice godliness, the necessities of life, they will take care of themselves. Psalms 37, 25. I have been young and am now old. 
Now am I old? Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. David never saw that. And you know what? I've never seen that in my life where a righteous person was begging for bread. Yes, I've seen righteous people who don't have what a lot of rich people have, but I don't see them begging for bread. And if you and that having food and raiment, let us be there with content. If you have godliness with contentment, you will even have the other things that bring happiness, only you'll actually get to enjoy them more. Look what it says in Psalm 84.10. David said, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. Amen. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in thee. No good thing. Well, I don't have the Corvette yet. Well, maybe God doesn't consider that a good thing. Maybe He knows it won't bring you happiness. There's a lot of things that we think are good, and maybe they're not necessarily bad, but they would not be good for us. And God's not going to withhold something that is good for you if you're walking uprightly. If you're doing the right thing, no good thing will you withhold. And in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, you ought to underline this verse. This is a great one. It says, The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Y'all see that? It'll make rich, and yet he addeth no sorrow with it. There are many rich people who are miserable, who have sorrow. Why? God will not let them enjoy those things because they don't have godliness in their life. They don't have contentment in their life. But when you're doing the right thing, God will bless you with things that you'll actually get to enjoy. Well, it says make rich. That means I'm going to have a million dollars, right? No, it means you're going to have the things that everybody's looking for. You're going to have the security. You're going to have peace. You're going to have happiness. You're going to have food and raiment. You might not have the big mansion. You might not have the nicest car, but you will actually enjoy the things that you have and they won't bring you sorrow. That's what God promises for those who are righteous. You'll have the peace and security. Psalm 34, verse 6. I just want peace and security. I just don't want to have to worry about anything. Psalms 34, 6. Of poor, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You know what? You just need to trust God. He will take care of you. We don't find our security in money. I don't know where people get that idea or where Christians get that idea. We get our security from the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him and delivereth them. He's going to take care of you. It doesn't say you'll never get in a scary circumstance. It doesn't say you're never going to have any challenges come your way. But it does say when you do, you'll be delivered. You'll be taken care of. And so listen, if you're struggling with worry, say, say well, I, I am godly. I am content, but I'm still worried. Well, if, listen, if you're struggling with worry, it's probably because you're just not quite as godly as you think you are. A lot of people think they're godly. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. It says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? You don't see that? Listen, we got more to life. There's so much more to life than just food and raiment. Yet that is some people's entire life. And that's sad. You know, the, behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither they reap nor gather in their barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which one of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. That's the way the heathen think. That's the way the world thinks. They constantly worry about those things. They constantly fall for the commercials. They constantly fall for the advertisements. They're constantly deceived by those things. But listen, we've got the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. We have the Word of God. And He said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Godliness. And then He says, And all these things shall be added unto you. The things that everyone's worrying about. God will take care of us 
The only thing we need to worry about is having godliness with contentment. There's great gain in there. Do not be deceived. Don't fall for the commercials. Don't fall for the social media stuff. Don't fall for that. If you have, if people are around you and they're using that to prove some one person's right and doing good, and they're maybe talking about the low balance in your checking account as proof that you're false, you know, God says withdraw yourself from them. And you know what some people need to do? They need to withdraw themselves from all these advertisements. They need to withdraw themselves from all these televisions. I know there's still more out there. You're going to see the billboards and all those things. But you know, learn to see through those things. Listen, I have such a bad attitude about those things. You know, my kids already have bad attitudes about those things, too. You ought to see them when they see some of these commercials. Jason especially, man, he just gets mad and he gets angry. And I'll see him getting mad at some of these things. And it's just like, I wonder where that comes from, you know. I've been hang- hanging around his mother too much. But no, it... it <laughs> That, but that, you know what? At the same time, I'm okay with that. I don't want my kids to be a bunch of brain mind or brain dead, mind numb robots that falls for every bit of goofiness that this world has to offer. It's it's sad, and we ought to know better as Christians. And it is. It's tricky. The devil's going to dangle that stuff in your face, and it's going to look good. You're going to think this will give me happiness. This is going to give me what I want. But you know what? The riches of this world, they are deceitful. Do not fall for them. Do not listen. Satan, he tried to use that with Jesus when he tempted him. He offered him the kingdoms of the world. He tried it. Didn't, it didn't work with Jesus. You know what? He rebuked him. He quoted scripture to him. We need to do the same thing when the devil comes at us that way and reject those things and seek first the kingdom of God. And so with that, let's all stand together.